Evangelism is inseparably connected to the power of God. Romans 1.16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. Now, we need to be able to connect with this power in order to be effective in evangelism. And the question is how. So I've been asked to give um, some practical tips for how to evangelize effectively. And the first one is to get alone with Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit is the one where all the power comes from because he is the very essence of God and he is with us at all times. And he is where we can learn everything that we need to know to be able to reach people where they're at. Isaiah 54, 5 says, For your maker is your husband, the Lord Almighty is his name, the Holy One of Israel is your redeemer, he is called the God of all the earth. And it seems kind of weird to some people to think of God as your husband, I mean, it's not something you usually think of. But what it does is she gives a really good description of how close God wants to be with you and how much he really wants to spend time with you. And so if you take that time, it will definitely pay off. Just like spending time with someone you care about always pays off. Um, when you spend time with Holy Spirit, you become in tune with his thoughts and his desires since he knows everything and you can meet people exactly how they need to be met. And the second tip I have for you is to know God is with you. Um, Isaiah 57 says, quote, Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. And this tells us that God is always with us and that he's helping us, and that we need to trust his promises that he's not going to let us fall on our face. Um, like one of the guys in the video was saying, well, what are they going to think of me? We don't need to worry about that because God has that taken care of. Instead of worrying about what people say, we need to hold on to God's promise that he's with us, he's helping us, and he won't let us be disgraced. And when you do that, the thing that's most important right now will no longer be, what are they going to think of me? The thing that's most important will become the person that's in front of you that's really hurting. And I saw an example of this. Um, I have a friend of Todd White. I, I met Todd White, and I like to watch him on YouTube. And he told a story about one time when he met some witches uh, when he was praying for people in Cincinnati. And he basically told them that Jesus loved them, and they spat out their drink. And she's like, oh, we don't believe that. And he's like, awesome, give me a hug. And that was very weird to her. And long story short, um, Holy Spirit told him that uh, she had an issue with her pituitary gland. She had a tumor. And so he actually got her friends to pray with him in Jesus' name that she would be healed. And she was. And what's really cool about that is because he knew that God was with him, and because he knew Holy Spirit was in him, he wasn't afraid of the powers of darkness because he knew that the powers of light were much stronger. And so if we know that God's with us, we have the courage and the ability to see people for who they really are and to be able to love them like he loves them. And um, my last tip is to step out in faith. Um, how many people have taken a cup and gone to the sink and then asked the faucet for some water? Hopefully nobody, because that's not how faucets work. You have to actually turn it on. The water's always there, but if you turn it on, then the water will come out. That's kind of how power works with Holy Spirit. If you can pray for power all you want, but you need to actually turn on the faucet, which is stepping out in faith, giving him an opportunity to flow through your life. And a really easy way to do that, to get started, because I always like to hear, you know, okay, this is the thing I should go to now. What do I do next? I mean, there's point B, and I'm at point A, and how do I get there? A really easy way to start is uh, treasure hunting. My dad's been doing these on sa Saturday, uh, Saturday mornings. And I believe every single time they've seen at least one person healed, more likely more than once. And actually last Saturday, um, somebody was healed of a back injury, and he also gave his life to Jesus. So some amazing things are happening there. And it's really, really easy. You just basically write down some things that Holy Spirit is telling you to look for, and then go look for people who match. And um, I actually started doing this when I was about 16. I was really, really nervous. Um, my dad actually kind of pushed me into it. And we went to a Verizon store because my friends needed uh, his phone to be checked out. And we ended up meeting this guy. He was talking about how he had been in Iraq and his knee had been blown out, his back had been blown out in his neck and his memory. 
And so long story short, we ended up praying for him, and he started getting really freaked out because he started feeling really hot, and he's like, what are you doing to me? Why is this happening? And it was really, really cool. I don't really know if he gave his life to the Lord because of that, but at least he was blessed by that. Um, Isaiah 51, 16 says, I have put my words in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand. I who set the heavens in place, who laid the foundations of the earth, and who say to Zion, you are my people. God's words in this verse, at least, are to say, you are my people. And that's what treasure hunting is all about. It's about finding people and reminding them who they are and who they belong to. And um, telling them that God loves them, even though they may not love him yet. Now, a lot of people worry about what's going to happen if they don't get healed. And that's something that's definitely something at least I've struggled with a lot. And I, it occurred to me that it's actually a win-win situation. Worst case scenario, they were loved. And best case scenario, they see a healing right there and then. And so we just need to step out. If we wanna, so if we want to effectively evangelize, we first need to get alone with Holy Spirit. Second, remember that God is with us. And third, step out in faith. Evangelism isn't just about getting more people to come and fill up a pew. It's about giving people an encounter with God that they will never forget. And the coolest part is that that encounter can be through you. All you have to do is say yes. So what are you going to say? Thank you.